but really the, the first thing is to think big and how do you do that? As, as a small startup, but I, know, I don't know how many of you here are startup actually. Can I have a raise of hand who's in a startup? Okay, awesome. Um, you have to think big. What do I mean by that? Never, never think that you're alone because there are tons of big MNCs out there who are really willing to work with small guys like you as long as you have so shown some traction. And that is true because for our case, um, a lot of these big companies started talking to us like um, Singtel. Um, they have Capital Land, which is huge. Really, they own like uh, malls in Singapore and China, and and they are huge. Why do they want to talk to us? Because they don't understand mobile. So this is your best chance to actually do some form of collaboration with them, to distribute through their channels and try to do a win-win situation. So you must think big because if you don't, you're going to be stuck in thinking that you can only reach a few hundred thousand impressions in Singapore. Um, the second part is to listen to your clients. I think this is generic across, uh, some of you guys here are from websites, so this is generic across building, no matter what you're building, right? Because if you don't listen, actually if you look at the slides again, if I change the title to a million dollar lesson in mobile strategy, you can actually change the title to dating a girl because it's actually all applicable. Maybe not the think big part, um, yeah. But everything else is applicable. So you need to listen to your clients and you need to build triggers in it to listen to your clients. So iTunes already provide you with a way to do that. People can rate your app on the App Store, but that is, most people do not rate your app. Trust me, they will just delete your app if it sucks. So there are other ways to reach out to your clients. For instance, many of you, if you are getting email addresses from your clients um, when they sign the app, you can actually send them an email and ask them about, it, it can be automatic, right? Because a lot of the apps today do that. When you register, they will send you an email asking you how their app is. They, there's actually higher chance of people replying to that email and telling you how your app is than rating you on your app store. Um, you should always build in triggers because if you don't listen to your clients, you don't know what's the phase two of your app. And if you don't have a phase two of your app, we go back to the graph just now where everything will just taper off. So you need to listen to your clients and you need to build in triggers for your clients to actually talk to you. And, and it actually helps to talk to people who, who is using your app. You need to understand where they come from, how do they know the existence of your app because a lot of these cases will surprise you. They are, they are, and if you do not know how they know your app, you can never grow. And why do they actually use your app, right? This, this, this kind of nuances, it sounds very straightforward and logical at this stage, but when they tell you something, it will trigger back again to your design phase. So every listing app out there has an image. Can someone tell me why? Um, yeah, because they copied from another successful listing app. But is it always better to have an image with the list in it? It's not, it's not always the case, okay? You need to listen to your clients and, and see whether that's something that's important to them. Okay, the third thing is about focus. Um, you, you need to have extreme focus in, in an app because um, people use apps when they are on bus stations. People use apps when they are sitting down um, drinking beer, listening to their friends or girlfriends talking. They use apps in places where they're not supposed to use apps, right? It's not like a desktop website. You, you sit there and you're really focused and Facebook has a million buttons for you to click on and you know which one each button does. On mobile, it's not true. So you need, you need to have the focus uh, of, your, of your application. If not, you're not gonna retain any of your users. Okay, um, again, yeah, this looks like something you sent to your girlfriend. But you need to remind users of why they love you. Um, if users are not going to use your app, they're going to delete your app. And a lot of times you need to build in triggers to remind them because like girls, they forget that you love them sometime. And it doesn't matter how you feel about them, it's always you need to remind them about it. Um, short of sending chocolates, we send push notifications on apps. Of course, the push notifications must be something applicable to them. Um, personalization is important. All, all really th specific things about them that you use in your app to build as triggers to go to remind them to use your app. Okay, but of course, if you're gonna mass spam then 
you know, sometimes my clients take my works too seriously and they, they send push notification to clients, to their users every night at 2 a.m. In case you don't know, it actually blinks up and it, when people find it out, they will just delete your app. Um, so, again, this is something for you to keep in mind with. Okay, so really what's important, because all of all the things I said just now, everything sounds like a huge investment and a lot of us don't have the money to do that. Um, so you need to understand what's the most important part for your apps and different apps um, have a different thing to look out for. So um, this is something that we consolidated. Um, so did you guys find my app, my, my presentation awesome because really the slides don't tell you anything? Uh, we, we speak apps generically into three portions, but um, Apple will disagree with us, they have 13 categories. But um, if you really look at it, most apps can be split, split into three portions. The first being utilities, the second being social, and the third being games. Most apps somehow fall into a combination of all three. And if you think that your app is all about utilities, listing, information, quickly getting information that you need, speed is the most important thing. Okay, if, if your users are gonna wait a long time to get the information they need, then they're gonna delete your app. Um, and how to get the speed, uh, it, this is really highly technical. I'm not gonna bring you guys through it, but there is a way to keep it most efficient, such that it's very fast, your app. And then for games, graphics are important. Okay, what I'm talking about now is phase one, right? Because in phase two, everything started moving, depending on what your clients tell you. But in phase one, you should, if you have limited resource, to focus on each one of these verticals. So if you are really a pure listing app, there is no point spending tons of money on graphics or animations. Okay, if you are games apps, and you, if you are not spending money on graphics, you are probably dead, because um, even Angry Birds being such an easy app, it, they do have nice birds, um, yeah. Then the social actually falls somewhere in between, where. You must have some form of graphics, but not too nice. Um, and it must be of some reasonable speed, obviously. Um, okay, why do I say that? Really, if you don't understand this graph today, you're gonna spend the money building on the wrong stuff. That's actually most crucial to your app. Because if, if your clients load your listing app and they see this all the time, for a very long time, and, and you'll be surprised how many times people actually see this on their app. Um, the, the thing they'll do is actually to, to quit your app, right? Okay, um, the other thing to really focus on is sharing. I'm, I'm not going to touch too much about sharing because everyone knows this. You can share through Facebook, you can share through Twitter. And, but actually what I find most apps do not do is they don't make a video of how their apps work and put it on YouTube. This is something really simple. Why are you guys not doing it? I, I, I don't understand that part because um, the video is going to help you, especially if it's some sexy ladies talking about what your app do. Um, you will be surprised because the video portion increases conversion by 3x. Okay? If you're not doing it today, please go back and do something about this part. Um, and obviously, if you just distribute it through YouTube, you're going to get seven views. So tie it to some existing platform. So these three must work together. together um, and you, you should, again, find out how your users know you. And through that medium, you should blast more from your videos. OK, um, how many of you guys have been to the Apple um, design department before? OK, none. OK, awesome. <laughs> I thought you guys are geeks. But anyway, um, this is copied from their wall. Um, simplicity, 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 and it's still not simple enough. This is Apple design policy, and this is what we also adopted in our company. We spent a huge amount of time breaking down how simple an app should be. So if you think that you need another feature, you need to really think again, because most of the time, your app should only fit one line. When people remember something about your app, it's only going to be that one single thing. And if you have like 10 things in there, your app is unlikely going to succeed. So um, this is true for phase one. You, you realize that for phase two, you need something else. This is um, 
a graph of features versus time people spend on your app. For the first release of your app, always aim to have one to three key features. Um, this because this is about how fast people can learn from your app. Anything more than that, people can't. People cannot put it in their brain. Why? Because when you're queuing for Starbucks, you are not at your best learning um, capability at that point. But but the funny thing is that if you do not do anything about it after people finish learning your app, they'll find it boring. Some somehow as human beings, we just love to learn things. Okay, um, it can be tiny things. For instance, for Angry Birds, their first release is very simple. It's just about shooting the single one bird at the same target. The second iteration can be something like you shoot different kinds of birds at different targets. It really depends on what your app does, again, but do keep in mind, if you stop development effort at this stage, no matter how successful you are, you're going to taper off, right? Because you're just not introducing anything new for people to keep um, their interest engaged in. Okay, again, um, back to our majestic design for SG Moss. So after today's talk, you should understand why SG Moss take off. Um, because it's very simple, okay? There's actually only one single functionality on it. Um, the design interface is really ugly. And at that time, obviously, there's only 18,000 apps active in iTunes. But if you launch something like this today, you will still get something. Because if you look at other listing apps out there, the successful ones are always with updated data and with something that's fast. Okay, They are not the ones with the fancy graphics or the fancy advanced search, caching everything. No, no, no. They are the ones that are very fast. Okay. Um, I know Tech Sailor probably has something to say about this slide because it does look that like their founder trying to run on a treadmill. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, the, the, sec the second point I'm going to talk about is you need to start thinking about features that will engage your clients. Um, so gamification is going to be extremely important uh, going forward. If you look at apps today, most of the successful ones have some form of game gamification in it. If those who those of you who don't know or have never heard of this term, gamification is about building the behavior um, in people or changing behaviors in people through a fun way. But in technically, there are f there's a, a specific way to do that. You build up a queue, and then from the queue, they build up behaviors or triggers. Um, and behaviors, you need to reward that behavior. So generically, that, that's what it means. But uh, specifically, how it works for you, um, it will depend. I'm going to bring you uh, through two use cases that we have um, done for two apps. Uh, it's pretty interesting what, um, what is the feedback that we are getting.